New York Republican Congressman George Santos returned to court today for the first time since pleading not guilty to federal charges. In the short hearing, the judge set his next appearance for September. Santos faces multiple charges, including wire fraud and money laundering. Prosecutors allege he used money raised for his campaign on personal expenses. The congressman faces up to two decades in prison if convicted. He has described the investigation as a, quote, witch hunt. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins us now. So, Scott, with the court appearance today, where does this case stand right now? We got a really good sense of the size and scope of this case today. The prosecution alerted the court that they have handed over so far 80,000 pages of documents to Santos's defense attorney. That's an awful lot of paper, an awful lot of reading, and Santos's defense asked for the rest of the summer to get through all this. So this case isn't coming back to court until September 7th, which coincidentally is just days before Congress comes back from its August recess. George Santos continues to face these 13 federal charges, these high-level fraud charges, and he is not destined to be back in the courthouse till the summer is over. So he will stew over this case, and his defense will review over this case over the next eight weeks. Uh, but, Scott, in addition to a courthouse, there's also a House Ethics Committee investigation into the congressman. What's the status of that? This is unique, and it has been from the start. The House Ethics Committee, which is running its own review of George Santos and many of the same accusations he faces in court, will continue its probe. In fact, they say they've expedited their probe even while the criminal investigation is underway. Oftentimes, if not almost all of the time, the House ethics panels will pause whatever they're doing until the criminal justice system is done with a member of Congress. Often they find it to be redundant, or sometimes those investigations can conflict with each other. A witness talking to one might not want to talk to the other. But the House Ethics Committee deems this a high enough priority. They will continue their investigation into George Santos, including some of the things we've heard about in the criminal case. What about those campaign finance disclosures, which are allegedly off or fabricated? What about the money? he has generated? What has become of all that money? And also, were there any violations of House gift rules? An awful lot's going on. And these two different probes will continue on parallel tracks, both steaming forward. So against that backdrop, Scott, what is Santos saying about his plans to run for re-election? He has declared his intentions to run for re-election, to be a federal candidate. Not a small thing when it comes to the legal case, though. He is still permitted to travel, which some federal defendants face stiff restrictions against. He can travel between Washington, D.C. and New York, his home district, and he can seek court permission to travel elsewhere, which has been deemed an important component of running for re-election. You have to travel to generate money and potentially to galvanize political forces behind your campaign. George Santos continues to run without the vocal endorsement of the 200-plus House Republicans with whom he serves and who still need his vote on tight matters, tight votes, and narrow margins. All right. Scott McFarland, thank you.